Hello everybody, you use K92 for the NXT review for December 23rd, 2015. 2K16 in the background. I am Bray Wyatt. Have a good match here with Roman Reigns. A pretty long match too. The, the fucker did not want to get beat. <laughs> he won that title and he went off the ditty on everybody now. So yeah, here to talk about NXT. Uh, this was the leftover NXT of the leftover matches from the TakeOver special. So they were still in London. Uh, awesome crowd, as always. Uh, sucks. I don't think it's going to be NXT for the next, like, two weeks, maybe. Because, like, they have this, like, year special, and it says part one. So I'm like, is that, does that mean two weeks of no NXT? Man, that's going to suck. So, yeah. First match is Vaude Villains versus the Hype Bros, which, man, London does not like the Hype Bros. <laughs> Versus Blake and Murphy with Alexa Bliss versus Jason Jordan and Chad Gable, which were over as over can be. Like, these guys got a fucking 90-hour chant to their name. That was pretty great. People just love Chad Gable, man. And I'm very happy Chad Gable got a lot of time in the ring. He got to show, like, you know, he, he did more than his usual stick of wrestling stuff, so... That was really awesome. I, I liked the Vaude Villains. They were dressed as uh, Sherlock Holmes and like his sidekick. That was, that was pretty cool. I thought that was kind of cool. Of Blake and Murphy were still fucking Freddy Kruegers. Uh, so yeah, fucking Gable was working his ass off, getting his shit on everybody. Uh, everyone's getting the heat on Gable because I'm like, oh, that's pretty smart. Because they kind of, I'm pretty sure they kind of guessed Triple H. I mean, Triple H probably kind of guessed that Gable was gonna be over as fuck. So. Every team got their heat on Gable. The Vaude Villains came out to a babyface reaction, and they were acting like babyfaces, but when they got in the ring, they were acting like heels, so I guess the heel turn is not in effect yet or something. So everyone was on point here. Fucking Jason Jordan gets the hot tag, and man, this guy hits every single version of a Taz Plex you could think of. Taz is probably, like, happy as fuck right now. He starts it off with a belly-to-belly. He hits a fucking, like, uh, cradle exploder suplex. He hits a Saito suplex. He hits another suit. Like, oh, my God. They start chanting Suplex City. I was like, yo, because Jason Jordan only used to do two of them before. But I'm like, yo, this guy just took this guy just took Taz's whole offense, which is pretty fucking awesome. He does them very well. Like, even Taz said so on, on the Taz show. Like, he hits these suplexes perfectly, man. So, good for Jason Jordan getting some love. They fucking wreck everybody. Then Jason Jordan does a belly to belly suplex to Murphy to everyone on the outside, which is a cool spot. Uh, fucking JJ and Gable win with their elevated back suplex, where he throws him up in the air. Gable catches him, brings him down. God, these fucking guys are so over. I am so ready for these guys to be the tag team champions, man. I like the mechanics. You know, they're pretty cool. I like I like their whole little thing. You know, no flips, just fists. I think that's all pretty cool. Because at least they're trying to be different. Very, very Arn Anderson-like, you know what I mean? They, they both feel very Arn Anderson-like. Super mega old school. So, uh, we got a good promo by the Perfect Ten. A really, like, serious slash, you know, like, he's playing around a little bit, but he turns super serious, so... Uh, he's talking about Zami Zayn, how he's gonna ruin his, you know, his comeback. And, uh, and a fucking great Elias Samson promo leading up to his fucking debut. This guy, man, I like this guy's promo skills. Like, I, I don't know if he could cut, like, you know, those are backstage promos, so you don't know too well. Like, even Nia Jack, she wasn't that bad on the backstage promo, but then on live promo, she sucks, so. I hope this guy got it live, man, so. Next up, we get Bull Dempsey. Man, what? I don't even know what they're doing with Bull Dempsey, like. I had, a, I had a little bit of hope. I, I liked the bull when he first came in. You know, the bull fit thing was funny for a little bit. But after the vignettes were done, I was kind of over it. I was like, ah, whatever. You know, it's kind of nothing too much you can do. So, yeah, we have Bull Dempsey versus Elias Samson. Elias Samson comes out. I like his theme. I like his entrance. He has his acoustic guitar ready to go. Uh, match is quick. Elias Samson hits sub knee. Uh, tells everybody to shut up, you know, he does, he does it very politely, hits a diving elbow drop, and the whole time I'm like, holy crap, he looks like NWO Macho Man, <laughs> and he fucking went with an elbow drop, oh, that matter of fact, you were not, I was like laughing, I was like, oh my god, NWO Macho Man, everybody keeps saying he looked like Sandow, but to me, he looked like fucking Macho Man, and just like, stamp of approval of him using the elbow, but, 
Like, uh, I, I definitely want to see more of this guy. Uh, his promo ability and those vignettes are fucking great. I like his victory when he wins, he starts playing the guitar, you know? Uh, I can see this guy being really good. Like, he, um, he definitely knows what he's doing in there. Uh, not a bad finish for him to pick, a diving elbow drop, because, like, it's different, because, like, no one really does does that. Like, I remember, um, Magnus had the most beautiful, Magnus from TNA, he had, like, the most beautiful elbow drop I've ever seen, and I was like, that is so simple. He His finisher was just an elbow drop, but I, I, I was super into it because he did it so perfectly. Elias Hansen hit a good elbow. Uh, good debut for him. It's actually kind of funny because in one of the live special, Bull Dempsey debuted the Bullfit gimmick on Elias Samson before he was even, you know, anything. He actually did have the Drifter gimmick, but it didn't. It, it wasn't pushed at the time. And now it's like Bull returns to favor. I thought that was kind of funny. But definitely see some money in this guy. I definitely like uh, would like to see him, you know, be something better. Then we have the main event, and I was like, "Holy shit!" There's a lot of time. Like this match is gonna get a lot of time, and it did. It, it got a lot of time, which I was very happy for. It was a very nice, good pace match. You know, it wasn't too banana crazy, but like it was a wrestling match. It was a pure wrestling match, which is good for Sami Zayn to have because then he can see, you know, how good he looks. So. Ty Dillinger, the perfect fucking 10, one of my favorite people on NXT, versus uh, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn comes out to an amazing reaction. Even Ty, he gets a fucking amazing reaction. People are super into him with the perfect 10 thing. They were doing it through the whole fucking show. The takeover special was crazy. Like, any time uh, the referee were to, like about to reach 10, they would just start the fucking chant. 10, 10. So, uh... We're gonna say fucking Zane got an amazing reaction. He looks great. Uh, he got a haircut, so you know he tried to change it up a little bit. Uh, Ty starts working the shoulder. You know, Sammy's trying to do his usual stick. Oh, Sister Abigail. You know, at first Sammy's not going too nuts because you know I guess he's kind of worried about the shoulder, but it's a story because I'm like this guy's a fucking amazing storyteller. And then Ty slams him on the on the ring post. He starts working the shoulder. We get a perfect 10 super kick, which I like. <laughs> Fucking long match. Really, really good match. Like, people start chanting, this is wrestling. And I'm like, yeah, it's pure 100% old school wrestling. This is a good match. Uh, fucking... Uh, Dillager's about to go at It looked like he was going to use Sammy's Yakuza kick, but he didn't. He runs, but then stops because Sammy gets his foot up. But then Sammy counters it into the corner exploder suplex. Hits the Yakuza kick for the win. That's it. Or Haluva kick is what they call it. But I'm just going to call it the Yakuza kick. Uh, really nice Haluva kick for the win. Uh, I was very happy about this because when I first saw Ty Dillinger, I'm like, oh, God, he's going to job out. But this was not a squash match at all. This was a fucking 15 minute match. Like, that made me happy because I'm like, I didn't want to see my boy job out. You know what I'm saying? So that made me happy. Uh, definitely want to see them do more with Ty Dillinger. I'm still very shocked that Sammy came back to NXT because, like, I I feel like they just should have put him in the main roster. Hopefully, he's the one. Cause like, if he's on NXT, I really want to see him go to the Royal Rumble and take out you know Owens. I want my Owens Sami Zayn match, damn it, at WrestleMania opening match. I really want to see it happen. So hopefully Sammy is able to go to the Royal Rumble. You know, hopefully they make that decision. Because I definitely do think they're going to have one NXT guy in there. Uh, that seems to be kind of the trend. I don't I don't think they did last year. I'm trying to think. But that's the thing. They, they need some stuff for Royal Rumble. Because Royal Rumble has sucked for the last fucking three years, man. So they need something. So seeing Sammy in there, mixing it up with some people, that would be fucking great. So... Uh, they actually, uh, I was like, oh, well, they said some time left. What the fuck's going on? It's Kevin Owens coming back to excite Sami Zayn. But no, they actually played Sami Zayn's, like, four-minute promo that he caught on the crowd, which is pretty awesome. He talks about, you know, his great to be back. He talks about, uh, like, how happy he is and how he says uh, it was really cool to see 10,000 people sell at the stadium. The people could start a 10 chance. I'm like, even in defeat, this man is still over. <laughs> so great promo, great stuff. Fans were really good. Uh, it's pretty kind of a bummer that we might not get NXT for two weeks. Uh, NXT is always great, of course. It's been, this has been a, a really awesome year for NXT. They've had some of the best matches on there. That's like some of the best matches WWE's had in a long while, you know. 
Sasha Banks and fucking um, Bailey, of course. Sasha Banks and Bailey, the other one. Finn is always, you know, excellent at pay-per-views. That Finn ladder match with Owens. The Finn match with Owens in uh, fucking Tokyo was fucking amazing. I rewatch that shit all the time. He has some good stuff this year, so. That's it for me. I'll catch you guys next time. Like, subscribe, and all that shenanigans. Enjoy the rest of the match. This is actually a pretty good match. And I'm doing my best to, like, destroy Roman Reigns with Bray Wyatt, the eater of worlds, the new face of fear. So, enjoy that. Catch you guys next time. Peace out. going through these guys' minds in a match of this magnitude. Look at that reverse. What strength. Seven. These guys are giving it absolutely everything they've got. They're not holding anything back, and I love it. Oh, Roman Reigns smashes that one. These replays. The shoulders are down. Today, too fast. No love lost between these two. Whoa, there's no wasted movement. Anytime you can string offense together like that, it helps confuse and dismantle your opponent. Showing a great deal of faith and trust in that move. His chest may be black and blue after this. slammed him with ease and almost slammed him right through the ring floor all these power moves tonight are making bigger and bigger impacts he's inflicting some serious pain here even if you can get back to your feet after a move like that at this stage of the match you're still struggling to find your balance no well, i can't wait to see what roman reigns does here is he? He's going to the top rope. Reigns looking to end this with a bang. Look out below! Look out! Oh, they couldn't find a home for that one. Well, it certainly wasn't due to a lack of trying, Michael. Look at Roman Reigns. With this type of strength and quickness, I feel like Roman could spear an 18 wheeler on interstate and stop the thing dead in his tracks. The question now is stamina. Superman punch! No! Kryptonite in sight. Oh, man, like a bird, a plane up in the air. What a Superman punch. Here's the cover. Really pushing his opponent to the limit here. Here we go, Bray Wyatt setting it up. Bray Wyatt's gonna finish him right here, right now. Oh, it doesn't look good for Bray Wyatt's opponent. Look away, Michael, this could be ugly. Bray Wyatt may get this one. And now Bray Wyatt could have this match in the bag. Makes the cover. Look at this, Bray Wyatt doing some good work here. There he goes again. 
And again. And again. And again. Looks like he's pinpointing the back. He's really been zeroed in on, but he's still showing some signs of life. Thinking to avoid that. When I see him attack the arm, it reminds me of how WWE Hall of Famer Arn Anderson would incapacitate an opponent's arm. Yeah, they actually should have called him Arm Anderson. You're watching Raw for more than 20 years, the premier program in all of sports entertainment. Oh, out of nowhere! Oh, no. Wait a minute, Cole. What is he going to do here? We're looking at complete domination here. This match has taken so much out of this guy, he's not going to give up. But, man, well, that's it. He just got laid out. Oh, he's in trouble now. Here we go. Bray Wyatt. Oh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Could this be it? I think so. Two. Three. He did it. What a huge win. Oh, that was a match for the record books. The WWE Universe will be buzzing about this one for a while. There was no love lost in that match. And look at the impact in these highlights. You want to talk about crowd-pleasing. You want to talk about incredible, high-impact sports entertainment.